Dotting the flat, scrubby land of South Texas is a town with a fascinating history and a truly unique cityscape. This is Castroville, a town of 3,025 miles west of San Antonio. At first glance, it might not stand out from the numerous other towns scattering the region. But the roots and preserved history of the town today harken straight back to the European settlers who immigrated here in 1844. Called the Little Alsace of Texas, Castroville's preserves and new buildings alike pay homage to the architecture of the French-German settlers who pioneered here almost 200 years ago. Let's explore the history of this place and take a look at the legacy of Alsatian settlers in the 21st century version of Castroville. The story of Castroville starts in Alsace. Alsace is a region of northeastern France bordering Germany that passed between French and German control five times. The language spoken here and imported by the settlers is a dialect of German. The town is named for Henry Castro, an Alsatian man who secured a contract from the Republic of Texas to colonize this land in the 1800s. He led a group of settlers from land-starved Europe across the Atlantic to start a new life. The first group landed in Galveston in 1844 after a 66-day voyage and traversed the harsh Texas landscape before temporarily holing up in San Antonio. When Henry arrived later that year, the group of 27 ventured west to establish the settlement with roughly 700 additional settlers to file in in the following years. They quickly completed a shed and a storeroom with a Catholic church, houses, and commercial buildings under construction by year's end. Like many immigrant groups, the Alsatian settlers adapted their home culture to the new environment of the Texas frontier. The early buildings of Castroville resembled the simple structures found in rural France and Germany. In this part of Texas, large timber was not readily available, and settlers instead employed masonry in lieu of the timber-framed walls found in buildings in Alsace. Most buildings were plastered limestone walls and pitched roofs. Red is a recurring color. Other buildings were more grandiose, with the grandest structure in the early town being the St. Louis Catholic Church, which towered above all the other buildings. Its artfully laid chiseled stone towers still maintain their grandeur today. After the era of the original settlers, the architecture here veered away from the Alsatian style and towards what was common regionally. Wood became more available with the advent of railroads, and at some point, the buildings in Castroville started to look like those of any other small Texas town. But pieces of the Alsatian roots carried over. Things like the red roofs have stayed long after the Alsatian style was abandoned. Side story here. This is the Medina Canal, an infrastructure project that carries water from the upper Medina River to thousands of acres of agricultural land in the Medina Valley. It has been in use for 110 years. Now back to town. Thankfully, much of the original architecture of the Alsatian settlers has been preserved. This is the landmark inn. The site was developed by a series of owners, both Alsatian and otherwise, with a house and general store built in 1849 by Swiss immigrants Cesar and Hannah Manad, who also built a commercial kitchen and acquired an adjacent house into the complex. The second owners, the Vance family, built a second, larger house in 1859 and added a hotel level to the store for overnight guests. The Vances had parceled off the riverfront portion of the complex and sold it to a pair who built a dam and gristmill at the site. An Alsatian family, the Karans, bought it following and developed it into the industrial center of Castroville, processing cotton, wheat, and corn, as well as lumber. By the time it sold again in 1899, the hotel was being used for storage with minimal upkeep. As the mill's technology was no longer competitive in an industrializing world, the Karan family sold the entire estate in 1925 to Jordan T. Lawler, who built a hydroelectric power plant providing Castroville with electricity for the first time in history. Much of the rest of the Lawler family relocated to the estate, with his sister Ruth becoming deeply ingrained in the local community and fighting for the preservation of Castroville's historic buildings starting with her family's own plot. She restored the old hotel and opened it as the Landmark Inn in 1942. She had it deemed a historic landmark in 1965 and donated it to the state of Texas in 1972. Extensively improved by both Texas Parks and Wildlife and the Texas Historical Commission, the inn operates as a period-themed bed and breakfast to this day. The grounds are open to the public, and it's probably the most iconic piece of old Castroville. Throughout the rest of the town, the Alsatian roots still show, with period buildings scattered throughout the historic core. Houses, commercial buildings, and even the 1849 Catholic Church, which still holds masses today. The town square is a great place to see how Castroville has evolved over the years and just how thoroughly the town's history has been preserved. If you've ever even driven through here, you've probably seen this building. This is the city's visitor center, but it started out as a house in Alsace dating back to the 1600s. 
In 1988, it was dismantled and transported to Castroville, and over the next 14 years painstakingly reconstructed as a tribute to Castroville's Alsatian roots. It was completed in 2002 and sits right across the Medina River from the landmark inn. Castroville today is a mix between the Alsatian village that was established in the 1800s and the following century and a half of development as an American town that followed. So much of the historic core of the city is well preserved, something that is both fascinating and satisfying to see. It's a place that has maintained its identity through a century and a half of change, and it's absolutely worth a visit. I'm Scott Daly. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel and come with me on the next adventure.